Hello guys, welcome back to another video by Eclip on my YouTube channel. All right, this week I chose to speak a little bit about vocal processing. So I was thinking a lot about how should I do this video, should I put the singing vocals, should I put the speeches, and I decided to show you with the speeches because I believe that is maybe more used, those speeches from the movies and whatsoever. So I will go through some of the processes that I do to process the vocals inside my music. So I found some project unfinished with some of the vocals. So let me first play to you how does it sound raw without any processing. Uh, and that question is, what dosage do I need to take? So it is a video from a YouTube, so I like this, the speech and I tried to put it inside the project. So what I did when I dropped it in, I stretched it in Cubase. We have a stretch option just like this, so I just stretched it to sound a little bit more slower and a bit more psychedelic. And that question is... So this is why it get, has this metallic sound. Sorry, I just need to turn off the processing. And that question is... As a first thing for processing the vocal is, I would like to fix our dynamics. So basically when we look at this audio event over here, we can see that it kind of has on three or four places it has those peaks and this is the main thing and the first thing I always do when it comes processing the vocals I want to get rid of those peaks and to pull them a little bit inside the mix so there are a few different ways how you can do this and the first one of course is with the compressor and this is the first way I'm gonna show you how to do it so compressor and when it comes to this kind of processing. So when you want to just compress those peaks, really important part is where do you put the threshold and also attack and release, I always put on zero. So why do I put attack and release on zero? So let's say that this line represents threshold, this straight line over here. So basically this is the volume set that I want to set on my threshold and all only wants to remove those peaks so everything that goes above this line I want to pull a little bit down so this is why I always set attack on zero and release on zero because this way when the signal gets above this line it will start to compress straight away and when the signal goes above that line it will release it and the compressor will stop working so that way I'm just going to want to collect those peaks and to bring them down and this is all also the second thing when you compressing the vocals, if the dynamic is a little bit more than this one, then I always prefer to use two or three gentle compressors instead of one with the extreme settings. And this way you always have the ability to not over compress because you can put, for example, the fourth one and then if you dis hear that you over compress, you just need to turn off the last compressor or to reduce the threshold to pull it a little bit on a better spot while if you use only one compressor and then to set it all the parameters to compress it just enough but not to over compress it it's really hard because there is always one point where it's gonna sound over compressed and when you pull it backwards it will just not compress enough. So my advice is always to use two or three times a gentle compression. As example, this one threshold is on minus four. And that question is... And then I have the second one with the almost same settings, just one dB lesser than the previous one because if this one is on minus four, the next one should be... It can work on minus four as well, but I think it would be much better if you put it on minus five. And that question is... So I'm not gonna do the gain staging on this video because this is just an example. So now if I bounce... And then if we check those two... 
I will just bring the volume of this event a little bit higher. We can see that we already fixed a little bit the dynamic of this channel. And this is how I do the first thing. Basically, I'm not doing it like this. If you are a Cubase user, there is much better way for my taste to process these kind of things, the dynamics. So I will bring this one to minus one because if you use the pen here, then you can just start removing those peaks because I do not want to compress the whole channel. My idea of using compressor for this one is just to pull down those peaks and make the dynamic a little bit easier for mix later on. So I will just find those peaks and I will just bring them down by drawing the envelope on the audio event. And this is a really amazing thing about the Cubase because when you have the ability to draw the envelope of the event, it's much easier than working with the compressors when you cannot see the waveform straight away. You could see the waveform by inserting some of the oscilloscope or other plugins, but this is much easier way as I don't need to use any CPU. I just drop the file inside and I just correct these peaks. And if we now compare those two, let me just see maybe a little bit more. Take the pen. And now... And that question is... And that question... Just this one, we need to bring the volume up. And this is the main idea of pulling down those peaks because we want to get rid of those peaks so that we are going to get able to bring up the volume of that channel if we want so. So it's always smart move to correct those peaks. And that question is... And that question... Just to bring the volume of this one a little bit more. And yes, to turn off the compressors. And that question is... And that question is... So on this channel, I can hear the compressor on the whole channel. It's not sure if you can as well, but I really can hear the compressor and it's kind of keeping the, the whole channel in some kind of tension. And to be honest, this kind of removing just the peaks and bringing up for me sounds more natural and kind of un uncompressed. So basically this will be the first thing I would do when it comes processing the vocals. Second thing is I will check is the vocal mono. And that question is... It has a little bit of stereo information, but not enough for my taste. So basically I will insert mono to stereo. I'm sorry that I do not know third party plugin for making mono to stereo as I'm really used on this Cubase plugin and it works really good. So I never needed to search for other plugins that are making the stereo from mono, but you can always do it by duplicating the this layer, make one totally on left, the another one totally on right, and then just make a small difference between them in milliseconds. Like you just duplicate. This one you put totally on left, the other one you put totally on right, and here you just make a little bit, let's say, five milliseconds. And that question is... You will get the amazing stereo, but anyway, with this plugin, I do not need to do that. So the next, the first thing is a uh, compression and to fix the dynamics of the vocal, because the human voice is organic thing and it's really, really strong in dynamics it will have the small part the the quiet parts and the louder parts and if you record the vocal on a microphone on a better microphone you will see that there's a big difference and that the dynamic is really big so the first thing about the vocals is to make the dynamic a little bit better for electronic music the second thing is i always put it to be stereo because i have problems to mix the mono files and instead of Beside kicking the bass, I do not have anything else in mono. I do put everything on stereo. Just it it depends from what kind of the channel it, it is. If it's a drums or hi-hats, I will put just a little bit side. If it's a lead, I will put completely on a side and so on, so on. I, in psychedelic tips, I made even the graph that explains how I do the stereo placement in my music. And I will say it again.
when it comes to stereo placement uh, in the past, people used to pan some channels a little bit left, some of them a little bit right, but this is more for organic music. For example, orchestras where in a concert halls, halls the, they had the positions on the stage. So let's say violins are always on the right side. So when you do electronically, you will also do it and as you want to emulate the concert halls and so on, so on. And also for the bands, if on the concert the guitarist is on the left side, they will always pan it in the studio, the guitar a little bit on the left side. This was for organic bands and when you record the live instruments. But when it comes to electronic music, I believe that we mix everything in mono and side. So I'm not panning anything left or right. I'm making it, is it going to be mono or how stereo it's going to be. Anyway, let's continue with this one. Basically, this is the main thing about processing the vocals from a technical part. And now from creative part, you can do enormous amount of things and for this case I use manipulator as I just made some automa automatizations with Mr. Big and that question is oh yes sorry I forgot to pull back the pen and that question is actually sorry before that part is EQing and what is the approach of EQing the vocals that I found out that I almost do every time so if the vocal is unprocessed and nobody put any EQ on it. Now we're gonna see just the analyzer in the background of the EQ. And that question is... Sorry, just to pull this out. And that question is... The vocals are always the loudest from 200 till 500 and this is the low mid area and we have the kick and bass in that area pumping really hard and the biggest power of the vocals is more on 1k and above that and basically the most sensitive area is from 2k till 5k so first thing I do I always reduce a little bit this area from 200 till 500 then I have always from 2k till 5k a little bit boosted and I always make a shelf for 2 or 3 dB as that way when we see the analyzer I want to get something close to the to signal to be the same loudness in the area of 200 till 500 and above that. So to have kind of a flat line as not the flat line but to get it close to that. And that question is... For example we have now a little bit... And that question is... And this is how the vocals sounds the best for my taste and I never have the problems to mix them later on in my tracks. So this is usually, this shape that you can see here, it's in 90% of my vocal channels. And after that, you can do manipulator, you can put a gator, you can put a reverb delay. I like to put black hole on almost everything, as you already know. And that question is... And that question is... And that question is... And I have Pro MB here also trying to keep this area from 200 till 500, not to have any peaks. And it's always kind of a safe thing to put one multiband compression in this area, just to keep this low mids a little bit compressed. And you don't need to pay much attention later on, will they have any peaks in that area. So basically that was all about processing the vocals. Also if you put the singing, when you are looking for the vocals, uh, try not to pitch them that much if you want your vocals to sound natural. So when you are pitching the vocals, if you pitch it more than a three semitones, it will start, start to sound as child is speaking. And if you go down, it will be this deep vocal and for that you should use form formatting but still you will have this artificial effect on the vocal so for example if i wanted to use to pitch it i will use the melda production and transformer so for example i want to pitch it for three semitones above let's type it three and that question is and that question is so it starts, even only with three semitones, it already starts to 
to sound as artificial, something is like not good with the pitch. And there's this form and shift where you can always put it like minus three. Uh, that question is... It sounds more natural, or you can use this keep formants. And that question is... And that question is... And that question is... And without the formant. And that question is... So, when if you are pitching the vocals, try to use keep formant, or try to find with formant, to find the best possible settings about your vocals. So this was all about the vocals, so I really hope that you liked it, and yeah, stay tuned until another video next week. Bye, ciao.